June 27th, 1892. Dear Martha, Yesterday afternoon, Susanna and Massimo were training the elephants. Susanna said, Teddy, Daniel, would you like to ride an elephant in the spesh? We were astonished. The spesh is the grand entrance into the big top at the start of the circus, she said. You'll have to practice with the girls. They seem to like you. The ringlings like for our entrance to be a big production. I think it would add flair. Massimo called Saba for me. He said, Saba, trunk town. Saba knelt down and curled her trunk around to the side. Massimo said, step on. Don't be afraid. She'll do the work. You just hold on. I stepped on Saba's trunk and held on. She raised me up. Massimo said, now climb up on her neck. Nice and easy. And just like that, I was on her neck. It's the highest I've ever been, except for the balloon ride. Massimo led Saba around so she could get used to me, and I could get used to her. After a while, he said, now, Teddy, you do it alone. The elephant had done the speck hundreds of times, so all you have to do is sit up there and look like you know what you're doing. I rode Saba around the empty ring until I felt comfortable. Massimo seemed impressed. I think you've got this. Susanna said, hold on to her headdress with one hand, Teddy. Use the other hand to wave to the crowd. Soon, Daniel was doing the same thing on Denise, a pretty elephant with long eyelashes. The two of us could have quit smiling, couldn't quit smiling. I almost had to pinch myself to see if I was dreaming. What would Mama think? Susanna took us to Marie, the costumer. Do you have something these boys could wear? They're going to ride Saba and Denise at the spec. Marie found two costumes that looked somewhat near our sizes. She pinned the places that were too big so she could sew them. The shirts were made of shiny blue material with spangles and sequins sewing across the front. The black trousers were full and gathered at our ankles. She gave us each a pair of pointy sho shoes with tassels on the toes and bright red satin turbans. Daniel and I looked at ourselves with Marie's full-length looking glass. Susanna clapped in hands and said, They look so handsome! Daniel said, How in the world did we go from living in the woods to this? When she left, Marie said, Handsome and pretty. She looked at me. I've been a, co a costumer for 30 years. If you're a boy, I'll eat my hat. I felt like someone punched me in the stomach. If Marie turned me in... We'd have to leave the circus, I said. I have to look like a boy. I have to. Marie said, I think you're, you'll fool everyone else. But honey, I do this for a living. She gave me a look. Relax. I know everyone's secret around here, and I know how to keep my mouth shut. Tomorrow's our first performance. We will do our show each day, a, man, a matinee in the big show, which means the evening show in between ticket holders visit the midway, buy food, play games, and walk by the animal wagons. The minute we finish the big show, we start packing up to move to the next town. Another good thing happened that we were, weren't expecting. Three more boys joined as first of May's, so Susanna arranged for Daniel and me to work only with the elephants from now on. She said, no more carrying water for the other animals, only our girls. You'll cut up the, front, the fruit and vegetables and help Massimo bring their hay. Afterwards, you'll have to take a bath by the o'clock and change into our customer costumes. I couldn't believe our good luck. Daniel whispered, a bath every day? Are you kidding? Masmo said, from now on, you'll be considered performers. Beginning perform performers, performers who are still working on their keep. But you won't be one of those work crews. You'll bunk in the costume wagon instead of the possum's belly. Three dollars a week. Great buckets of butter beans. We are performers. Love, Teddy. June 28th, 1892. Dear Martha, why does trouble always come? Today was the big day. Daniel and I were starting up as performers. Just before two o'clock, Massimo led the elephants down the midway to the ring doors. The canvas curtains that led to the big top. Daniel rode Denise and I rode Saba. The band played Entrance of the Gladiators. Everything went swell with the elephants. My face beamed and I grimmed from ear to ear when I entered the ring on Saba's back. Massimo led the, led the way. 
followed by Babetti and Susanna on her back. As I rode past the crowd, I smiled and waved at all the little kids. As we went around the ring for the first, the second time to give folks their money's worth, a kid threw an apple at one of the elephants. The ringmaster said, son, don't do that. And I looked to see who had done it, and it was Verna Dud's boy, Georgie. There sat Jimbo, Verna, and the rest of the family. Massimo gave the signal for the elephants to stop. Saba stopped right in front of Jimbo and Verna. My heart felt like one of the clowns was pounding on it with a bigger-than-life hammer. Massimo called, Company, down. The elephants knelt, and that was the signal to stand up and wave. The crowd clapped like they'd been something glorious. Jimbo and Verna were staring right at me, but they didn't seem to recognize me. I had to force myself not to jump off Saba's back and run away. All I could do was act like I was a performer who had been doing this all my life. As Daniel and I stood on our elephant's backs, the ringmaster called Massimo, Susanna, and the amazing Torniki brothers. Who? No one had told us that we were now the Torniki brothers. We rode the elephants back out of the ring so Susanna could perform her tricks with Babette. As soon as Daniel and I were alone, I said, we've got trouble. Jimbo is here. Jimbo dud. Daniel said, Jimbo dud, are you sure? I said, you know the kids that threw the apples at Mindy? That was Georgie. All of the color drained out of Daniel's face. He said, did he recognize you? I said, I don't think so, but I don't know for sure though. Between the shows, Marie came to see us. She waited until Susanna and Massimo were, weren't around. She said, I thought you'd want to know. Someone snooping around, asking questions out of the midway. They're looking for two runaways, a boy and a girl. I sank right down to my feet and sat there with my head in my hands. I said, they can't find us. They're trying to steal my pap's land. They want to put us in an orphanage. Marie said, I don't think you'll get any information here, circus folks. Don't talk to townies. I just came to warn you. Daniel said, we'll run away again if we have to, Teddy. The thought of running away again filled me with sadness. Today, I had ridden an elephant. Today, I had been a circus performer. Suddenly, we had heard a um, commotion. We looked out of the midway. One of the monkeys had escaped from the cage. It jumped from the wagon to the wagon and the leaped into the town of the lemonade stand. A crowd had gathered to see the naughty monkey run from the keeper. The monkey leaped on the dog's back and tried to run like a horse. This made everyone laugh so hard that some were almost fallen down. Jimbo, Verna, and the kids were in the crowd. Georgie threw Peanut at the dog. Then he pulled on Jimbo's arm and whispered something in his ear. Daniel pointed. The dog was Ethelbert. Love, Teddy. June 29th, 1892. Dear Martha, Daniel and I remembered to disguise ourselves, but we had forgotten that someone might recognize Ethelbert. Oh, Martha, why didn't we think of that? Thank goodness the circus was leaving town in that evening, and Daniel and I fed Ethel and hid him in the costume wagon. We finished the second show, changed into the work, our work clothes, and tried to stay out of sight as we helped Massimo and Susanna get the elephants back in the wagons and ready to roll. Just before we left, I heard a familiar voice coming from the other side of Saba's cage. It was Jimbo Dud. He was talking to Massimo in an ugly tone. I crouched down and out of sight. Jimbo said, They think I'm too dumb to follow their tracks. But they can't fool old Jimbo Dud. I saw they're riding on the riverbank. There's two of them, a boy and a girl. She took off with something that belongs to me. Listening to Jimbo's lies made my heart ache. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Jimbo said, I know they're here. My boy saw their mangy dog. Massimo said, Please leave this area immediately. My elephants don't like strangers, especially men. My wife was told you, that you were, hadn't seen the person you speak of. There are, the only, there are only ourselves here and our nephews, the Tornick brothers. Jimbo wouldn't leave. What are their names? Massimo said, Their names are none of your business. But since you're persistent and being rude, their names are Vincelli and Gordani. Now, if I have to ask you to leave again, I'll have to throw out. Jimbo said, it's a free country. I'll leave when I'm good and ready. 
All this time, Saba had been drinking water, sucking it all up in her trunk, and squirting it into her mouth. Now, she raised her trunk, blew a blast of water at Jimbo's dud. His face turned as deep, angry red, and he left in a huff, dripping water and cursing. Mosmo looked at Saba and laughed. He said, You're a smart girl, Saba. You are the smartest girl. I was shaken from fear, but I couldn't wait to tell Daniel and Saba had done to Jimbo. Mosmo turned to the corner and almost ran into me. He looked at me with his kind eyes. I said, It's not true. You know. He's trying to steal something from me and belong to my pap. Masmo said, Teddy, I know you're a good kid. I said, Do you know Massimo? He said, The elephant told me. I looked puzzled. He said, Elephants have a sixth sense. They only trust people who are trustworthy. I said, Can I stay? Can Daniel stay? He said, No, I'm sorry. There's no job for Teddy and Daniel here. My heart skipped a beat. Masmo said, Their jobs have been taken over by Vincelli and Gordami, the Tormenic brothers. In my relief, I threw my right hand in the air like a salute to the crowd. I shouted, Non ti la prader! An expression Susanna and Massimo used all the time. He smiled and said, Sta facendo e parpagalo. Five minutes later, we were on the roll. Every mile took us further away. And Jimbo Dud. Love, Teddy. Nanti la prader. Don't worry about it. And sta facendo el paragalo. You are such a parrot.